Alright, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. And a very good morning. I hope everyone can hear me. Okay, so um, just share my screen first. Alright, I hope that you can see my screen. Um, thank you for coming. So today, what we're gonna do is uh, basically just kind of like a sh um, sharing session on how you can um, organize your learning materials, your teaching notes, your lecture notes, and everything else um, in Spectrum and Microsoft 365. Um, it won't be a full three hours long um, session. So it will be around about one, one hour to one and a half hours. And um, please, by all means, if you want to follow, you can follow what I'm doing. Um, otherwise, all the sessions are recorded and um, you can view it later on. And of course, if you would like to um, ask any questions, um, just unmute your mic and um, I think you should be allowed to unmute your mic, okay? Just unmute your mic and um, stop me anytime. All right, so uh, my name is Hadi. Um, I am from EDEC. Uh, my original PTJ is Faculty of Science. Um, and um, today I'm gonna show you a little bit on how I organize my lecture materials um, and um, what you can do if you would like to use Spectrum and Microsoft 365. I know the example that I'm going to show you guys uh, basically not my own practice because I've already have my own um, organizing system using a different platform but nonetheless this is what um, the university provides for us and if you would like to use it then be my guest you are welcome to use it. All right. So the learning outcomes for this session are basically for you to be able to use Spectrum storage for TNL. So the main focus is TNL because normally our lecture notes are rather small in size. Um, however, if you're thinking about your um, recordings, for example, which are very, very huge, then of course, Spectrum is not an option. However, you can always upload your um, recordings um, either a third to a third party, like for example, YouTube, or you can always use Microsoft 365 um, features. Okay, there's streams, there's um, uh, OneDrive that you can actually use and stro store your learning materials. Okay, so in terms of the second one, Microsoft 365, um, what I'm gonna cover is basically um, just a very basic uh, for you guys to know where you can find your files in Microsoft 365 how you can um, access the file, store the file, and of course, to another day, sharing. So sharing over here means that, say for example, you have a file that you've already uh, put into Microsoft 365, um, you can straight away share those files to your students. It doesn't mean that you need to upload to Spectrum. Um, but of course, if you do upload to Spectrum, then we do have the um, uh, blended um, pretty much information. But nonetheless, uh, it is an option for you to directly share your files, especially for those who are actually using uh, Microsoft Teams. OK, and you kind of like skip using Spectrum altogether, uh, even though it's highly encouraged that you still do complete your file or your documents in Spectrum. OK, it will help us as a university to report back to the KPT. But nonetheless, um, it is allowed for you to still use Teams uh, or perhaps a Google Classroom if you're still using them. All right, so let's move on to the first one, um, how you can actually store files on Spectrum. Um, we will do a kind of like a, a live session. So what I'm gonna show you is first one, uh, file preparation in terms of how you upload it and how do you add to Spectrum and um, pretty much how to access, okay? So, so over here, I have my um, original Spectrum page. Okay, as usual, you log in, um, okay, so uh, in my case, it's already a login, but otherwise you need to log in, key in your username and password as uh, shown here. And then um, sometimes the menu uh, navigation bar over on the left hand side is not open. So always click on the three lines over here and then you should be able to see all your courses. Okay, so in this case, let me just take um, SID 204. That is my one of my courses that I'm teaching this semester. All right. So in terms of um, files, when you're talking about storing your um, lecture materials, there's two ways of doing it. So number one, um, of course, as usual, turn it on, okay? So number one is by which you can just simply drag and drop, 
Okay, so you can see here, those are my lecture materials in PDF, and these are my, uh, this is my course page. You can always drag and drop, and you can see here, now it's updating, and it's always live, um, so that your students can um, actually view it, download and view it. Um, additionally, what you also have is if you scroll down over here, okay, you can see there's one section called private files. So this is where you can also store all your files into the server and say uh, perhaps, um, so what I'm showing just now was for you to upload your lecture notes directly into Spectrum, right? But what if um, you have the same lecture notes, but uh, when we are doing our curriculum review, now you, you have a new course code, okay? And because it's a new course code, uh, you need to redo all your Spectrum page. So there's two ways of doing that. Um, the first one is, of course, you, you can simply just drag and drop, as I've showed you previously. And second one is by which you can actually um, export all the uh, learning materials that you have uploaded on your um, Spectrum course page, and then, um, import it back into your new course page. Okay, but that is out of what we're going to cover today. So we're going to look at today on how you can actually save the materials uh, into your own private files over here. Okay, and then simply just upload it into your new course uh, file. So if you click on private files, this is the page that will be shown to you. And basically, it's very simple. There's nothing else. Right. So what you need to do next is just um, either you can click this button to upload. Okay, so that's number one. Or number two, we can simply just drag and drop the lecture notes into over here. Okay, so if you upload, drag and drop like that, then it's already here. Um, save changes and everything will be saved on your drive, okay, on Spectrum. But notice here that um, your limit is 100 meg. So it's not that huge okay? because everything um, that you uploaded on Spectrum is also on our own server, in UM server. So an alternative that we're going to do, I'm going to show you guys after this is by which you can actually use OneDrive to do roughly similar things, just storing the files in the cloud and then just put in a link um, on Spectrum. OK, so say uh, moving back to Spectrum, once you have uploaded your file on your private files, if you go to any courses, so um, originally these two files are for SID2004. Okay, if I go over here and say I want to upload a file, what you can do is basically add an activity or resource. Because um, remember, uh, again, your lecture materials are considered as a resource. Okay. So you can click on add a resource. Now you can choose a file because the file has already been uploaded. Okay, You can just name it here and uh, you can always select. Okay. So uh, we can, again, over here, you can either drag and drop the files, or if the files are already on Spectrum, you can click on this Add New Files. Okay. Now you can go to your private files, because you've already uploaded into your private files, and you can see these are the two documents. Okay. So I can click on that. I can rename it as I want. Okay. Change the author, and change all the copyright license if you would like to, and select this file. And as you can see now, uh, if I save and return to course, the file is there, okay? So this is the file test. If I click on it, then it will upload and I can view the files now, okay? Um, other than that, right, and okay. So because this is the course, I'm gonna delete this now so that it won't confuse my students. I'll move to a different course just to show that, you know, it's there and basically you can access it anywhere regardless of uh, whether it's the same course or not, okay? Again, add a, uh, add a resource, um, choose files, and then click on the new button, and again, the files is there, okay? All right, so additionally, what you can do is, if, say, um, now this is a new course, okay? So it's a new curriculum, so it's a new course, but the lecture materials has similarities, okay? So what you can also do is you can go to your server files over here, and then scroll and find the course that you have taught previously. Okay, so because everything on Spectrum is files, is safe as a whole in the server. Okay, so you can just go and file, find the course itself, and again click on over here, and you can add it in. Okay, so basically any files that's already on the server, if it's for a new course, 
you can always find it over here. Okay. Um, and the last one is, uh, so we have covered about private materials. Um, Wikimedia, if, if you do have it, but otherwise, if you don't have it, then I'm just going to skip. But if, say, you already have all your lecture materials on uh, Dropbox, okay, so you can just link on your Dropbox over here, and you can just view and directly upload your files from, um, from the cloud. Okay, meaning that, so in this case, what I'm showing you guys is because I am using my own PC. Okay, so I have all my files on my own PC. So say, for example, you have all your files on the cloud, but um, you forgot to upload it on Spectrum. And now you want to upload it on Spectrum. And how do you do it? So these are, uh, well, pretty much these are your options. Okay, so you can upload it on private files first, like from the very beginning of the semester, or if you keep everything sync from your PC to the cloud, either via um, Dropbox or Google Drive, uh, or Content Bank is again in our server. So just basically on these two, and then you can simply just um, upload it or choose the file from the cloud into your spectrum. Okay, so in this case, I'm gonna show you on uh, my Google Drive because I've already linked my Google Drive um, to, so my, teaching materials or part of my teaching materials is linked to Google Drive. So I can click on Google Drive over here, go to my drive. Okay, so now I can see over here my teaching, my uh, department's files, my celebratory, um, my other work. So everything that I've shared uh, with my Google Drive, my UM Google Drive, okay, so it's already here. Okay, so um, say for example, I can't remember what I have saved here. Okay, so this is my um, same course, uh, but from the previous semester. So, oops, there's nothing over here. Uh, let's see. What can I choose? I'm not sure if I have a file here because my Google files are normally Google's. So it's not a PDF. Oh, there you go. So I, I now have a template files that I can just simply click and um, it will upload as a file. Okay, so uh, pretty much that's how you add files on Spectrum if you are actually using um, cloud services. Need to make sure that it's not here. Okay, so that's about it for Spectrum. It's very easy, very straightforward. Um, let me just recap again. If you log out um, from the very beginning, okay, so you log in. Um, choose your ID. Again, your ID now has 365, but it's the same password. And um, once you logged in, um, if the navigation is not here, click on these three lines. It always goes to, uh, you can always go to private files and you can always see the private files is already here again. So again, you can just drag and drop to make sure that your files are all here. And then you can just go to the course um, that you would like to upload the files. Then on editing, add activity or resource and choose file. And then from that, you should be able to um, add the file, uh, select files and um, select from your private files. Okay. And uh, finally, just if you link again with uh, Dropbox or Google Drive, you can always import directly from those two um, resources. Okay, so that is all uh, for the first section. If you do have any questions, just uh, let me know. Otherwise, uh, we're going to move to the second one. Okay, um, live session. And uh, in terms of Microsoft 365, uh, what I'm going to, uh, what, what I would like to uh, cover is basically, um, let me just look at the chat first. Okay, so basically, is um, three things. Um, number one is storage. How do you store your files? How do you access the files? And uh, last one is how do you share the files? Okay. Um, again, this is a very basic, very, very basic for those who do not know how to do it. Um, you can either follow through or you can just review the recordings later on. All right, so Microsoft 365, let's have a look. So if you go to, um, so previously it is known as Office 365. But now Microsoft has, has rebranded into uh, Microsoft 365. Um, you can, if you use a tablet, you can always download the 
you know, you can just go to your store and search for Microsoft 365. Should be able to see the app with this particular logo. It's no longer using the orange color. It's more on like blue pink color. Then you said you can download that one and um, log in using your uh, Microsoft ID. So your username at 365.um.edu.my. Okay. So, uh, and additionally, so what you have online or in the cloud will also be synced to your mobile devices. And if you actually log in into your uh, PC as well, then you should be able to get it on your PC. Okay. So say, for example, I'm going to show you guys a little bit on um, how I do it on my PC. I'm going to switch my monitor. Okay. So that's the previous one. Um, basically, what I have over here is uh, I actually sync my Google Drive. Okay, so this is the old Google Drive where you have your username at uh, um.edu.my. You can also um, sync your OneDrive um, using 365.um.edu.my. So this is how I do it. Um, I'm pretty much focusing a lot on the, um, uh, my research materials. Okay. And additionally, uh, the ones that I've used previously for a long time is uh, iCloud. So this is where I have all my um, organized files. Okay. But today our focus is more on 365. Um, so I'm just going to show you guys uh, this one. Okay. So you can always download uh, OneDrive from Microsoft uh, website. So if you go to OneDrive over here, Okay, even if you go to Microsoft365.com, um, you can click on products, OneDrive is there. So you can click on it, download the files, install in your computer, and then log in using your UM credential. Then you can select the folder um, where, by which, you know, whatever you do in your PC, in that particular folder will automatically be uploaded to your cloud. Okay, so this is one way by which you can do a backup. Because I understand sometimes, um, hard drive get damaged, it might, so you might lose your files. It happens to me when I was doing my, even my doing my degree, happened again second time uh, when I was doing my PhD. So that's why I skip and uh, use Apple, because at that time Apple was kind of like um, the main source for my uh, old alma mater. Okay, so I use that, so it will give me an easy access to all my documents. So since then I've been using iCloud. Uh, when I entered UM, because UM was originally a Google user, so I have my Google Drive over here. And then now we are switching to uh, Microsoft and I have all my Microsoft files. So I have all three clouds um, and this, these two clouds are linked to my iCloud. So everything that I do in my computer will be uploaded as a backup to my Apple and my Microsoft. So that's one way by which you can do it. Okay, so that's the shortcut pretty much. Uh, but the long cut is when we are talking about teaching and learning um, and how do I organize my materials and how you can actually do it. So if you go again to this website, um, sign in. And again, you can sign in using your um, UM credential. Okay, username at 365.um.edu.my. Okay, and of course, over here, it's automatically logged in because I've already signed in. Uh, but in, in your case, perhaps you need to key in your password. And what you will see is you will see this page. Okay, so this is your entry page. And this is where Microsoft actually pulls in all the information that are available on your Word document, your PowerPoint, your Excel, your Access, okay, your OneNote if you're using OneNote. So everything will be here. And of course, whatever you put in your Teams, if you're using a team, then it will be here as a jum jumble up all information. Okay, so uh, this is all just to show you guys some example. And this share feature is very good, especially if you are sharing your documents with either your colleagues or if you would like to share directly the files to your students. Okay, so you can actually just do everything over here or do on your PC and um, upload it again um, using OneDrive on your desktop so that everything is on the cloud always. Okay. And to make sure that you have all your files directly um, to the cloud. So say, for example, uh, of course, if you're using Teams, uh, when you log into your Teams, you already use your Microsoft credential, right? But sometimes uh, if you're using an old PC, you might want to uh, you, you might have used 
uh, Word, PowerPoint, or Excel, either the older version or you are using a different key. Okay, so to check whether you have um, use it, you have used UM credential, you can always open your um, either one of your documents. Okay. So in this case, uh, I'm just showing you guys on Word document, but it's actually the same for all Word, PowerPoint, Excel, Access, and everything that you have. Okay, so you can open your Word, go to Options. Oh, no, no Options, sorry. Go to Accounts over here. Previously, it was under Option, but now it's uh, under Accounts. So if you click, in, uh, if you click on um, Accounts, you should be able to see your user information as your um, UM credential, okay? If it's not your UM credential, then if you log in um, to online or cut version of Microsoft 365 using a UM credential, then you don't have the files, okay? But if you log in using your UM credentials over, over here, okay? So now you can see I've um, saved or I've logged in using my UM credential. So what I can do is um, say, for example, I want to create a blank document. Okay, so this is a test. Okay, so what you can do is you can always use this auto save feature. So you click on that, then it will ask you how do I auto save. You can always choose your OneDrive. So once you click on that, um, so I'm going to save it uh, as a Test edit training, and what will happen is it will save on the cloud, and pretty much after this, you can view it on the cloud and continue on the cloud uh, in the sense that if you are working either from your office and from your home interchangeably, okay, you can always have your files everywhere. Okay, let me see, still um, saving over here, so you can see an icon of um, like a rotating icon. Let me see, it says saved. We can go back to our Microsoft 365. Gonna refresh over here. And now we can see the file is uh, uploaded and I can just simply access it. Okay, so this is um, how you do it on your own. So in the sense that all the files are yours and you are not sharing it with your students. Okay, um, there's editing online okay and of course uh, microsoft feature is the same if you have used google form before google google sheet or um, google doc okay so everything that you do it will be automatically safe as long as you are using a web browser now it says safe if i go back to my original file and you can see now it's there okay so uh, this is a, a, a good way by which you can just create um, a document on the go. So it doesn't mean that it's only work for Word. You can do your lecture notes, for example, online. You can just have one file that you save online um, and you just share it with your students. So anything that you change online, your students will also view it. Okay. So in terms of, of um, sharing, there's two options. Okay. In, if, say, um, so I've pretty much covered a little bit about um, storage, okay? just a very tiny bit. Access um, by which you can access it either on your desktop or online by going to microsoft365.com, login in, uh, log in using your uh, Microsoft ID. Okay? And the third one is about sharing. So how do I share? So in this case, you have seen that if you turn this save uh, function on, you are already sharing with yourself on the cloud, meaning that anyone or any uh, computer or PC that has access to your username, uh, your UM username, will have access to the document. So say, for example, I'm just going to close that one. Let's create a new one using PowerPoint. Okay, so this, uh, for example, if say this is my lecture notes, this is my lecture notes. Okay, so just an example. Um, Oh, that's a bit ugly, but nonetheless, um, for students. Okay, so this is an example. Again, uh, if you go to file and account, just to make sure that you have the, real, um, the credential 
of your Microsoft um, UM365, then you're good to go. And what you need to change is just change it to auto save on. Okay, again, click on your OneDrive. Um, you can perhaps put it as lecture one. Okay, click on OK. Then it will be saved automatically to the cloud. Now, uh, say for example, you already have your file like this and you want to share it with your students, but you don't want them to edit it. You want them to have access so that any changes that you made, they will see it, but uh, they cannot adjust it on their own. Okay, so on the new Microsoft uh, 365, if you do have a Microsoft 365, um, I do understand some of you um, might have installed the older version and you have uh, issues in having this uh, share button on the top right hand side. Okay. Um, so if you do have that issue, I'm going to show you how you can upload, uh, you can download the newest version. But for now, we're going to continue with how do you share your files. So you can just click on that and then look at the, uh, you can either manage access where you can see all of this. Or uh, if you want to have uh, a session live with your students, like what we, are, what we are doing now, you can always link to this slide. Okay, so if you click on that, so what Microsoft will do is it will generate uh, a link to this slide. And what will happen is basically you can just uh, view the slide. So I'm going to share it over here. Okay, so um, you guys should be able to access it if you want to. Um, but you will not be able to um, change anything because the settings over here says that you can only view. Okay. All right. So that's one way by which you can do it. Um, and say, for example, if you want to have um, one slide always like this. Okay. Again, you can go back to Spectrum. And okay, so you can always go back to Spectrum. And what you can do is instead of uploading your lecture notes, um, again, sometimes when you edit your lecture notes, you convert to PDF and then you upload it again and again, right? So that's that's kind of like uh, our routine um, at the very beginning of the semester. So I'm showing you guys now is an alternative to do that. So what you can do is um, again, click on activity or resource. Um, you can always use URL. Okay, and then uh, lecture notes one and then paste the link URL from my Microsoft 365 just now. And appearance, you can change it to a new window so that once the student click on the link, you will open the new window and you can go and save and return to course. And you can see now lecture one is over here. Um, let's put it at test so that my student will not be freaked out. Okay. Now, um, if I am a student, I want to view how my student uh, view this. You can just click on your name on on the top right hand side of the spectrum, you can switch role okay, to your students. Okay, so this is what my student will see. So all the hidden files are no longer available to them. So what is made available to them is what they can see. And you can see here now the lecture notes is over here. So if I click on that, it will open a new window and directly it will open Microsoft Online. Okay. Um, but because this is my own account, so I can edit it. But let me just say, for example, switch it to a different browser. Just to show you how the student will look. Um, okay, switch role again to my student. Okay, and the student will view it as this okay so it's still the same but now it's under viewing you don't have permission to edit so the student cannot do anything if i'm trying to click this okay nothing will happen except for playing a video button there's no slide because uh i've already prepared one slide let's say for example if i want to add any slide okay so um course learning outcome the CLO, so CLO number one, you can change the numbers for you. Um, understand how to organize your files on Microsoft. Microsoft 365. So click on save. 
and what my student should be able to view is let me see if it's uploaded or not yet okay now your students can see the second slide okay so this is how you can prepare your lecture materials without having to upload your lecture materials every single semester okay so you can just prepare one files and the student can still upload it download it as pdf so there's no issue okay um so you can just tell your students um all my lectures will be here it's already been prepared and the beauty thing is you don't have to redo it in every semester uh, or even if you have done a curriculum review um, what you need to do is perhaps just change the code of the course uh, and change the content a little bit but you don't have to change all the links so the links are already there students can access it share online so um, it's save you time pretty much okay because now we have so many things to do um, this is just to showcase on one way by which you can save your time okay um what else so we have covered about share so you can also present in teams uh if you are using teams uh, like in my case some courses i'm using teams some courses i'm not using teams um but nonetheless it's up to you you do have a choice um to present it on teams okay um and additionally in terms of the teaching materials if say you are doing an offline or recorded session uh, Microsoft now has uh, embedded a recording feature like this. So you can just click on record, um, go through your slide, record everything, and then Microsoft, uh, you can export it. And then from the export file, you can either share the export file to your students, or you can use um, different platform, third party platform, like, you know, I don't know, TikTok, if you want to use TikTok, or YouTube, or uh, Microsoft Streams to actually upload all the lecture materials and share it with your students. Okay, so these are all the options that you can save. Uh, if you were to do it live, um, then face-to-face, uh, -face, then uh, I will ask you guys to actually do it on your own, have a go, have a practice. Um, so that's why the session is actually set originally for about three hours. Uh, but if I were to be the only one who will actually talk, then yeah, pretty much uh, almost covered everything. Okay. Um, all right, so again, uh, just a summary um, on Microsoft 365. So if you go to Microsoft365.com and log in your, using your UM credential, you will open this platform, and this is where all Microsoft have collected all the documents. The most recent one will be uh, viewed up here. Okay, now I, I, I now have my um, lecture one, and you can see here, even when the um vice uh all the information all the documents that is linked uh that is shared in your email okay now will also appear over here okay so this is why i've seen this but of course this is not just for me it will be for everybody so if you go uh and log into your microsoft 365 account you should be able to see this as well okay so this is what our um this is actually taken up from our email account um now what else um do i need to cover um okay so uh in our 365 account let me see here if i can show it to you guys sorry dr abdullah can we go back yes. to that page tadi tu yang ada so many files from other sorry i just want to know because i i also always see all this kan dekat our Microsoft Team, uh, sorry, my, uh, my 365. So mm -hmm. uh, let's say if I accidentally delete it, is it going to affect um, orang yang, yang originally owned the file? Um, it depends on whether the, the owner um, gives you permission to edit or not. If he or she gives you permission to edit, and if you delete it, then it will be deleted to everyone, for everyone, because the original file might be deleted. So. Uh, what will happen is uh, this is based on Google for Microsoft. I'm not sure I haven't tried it, but for Google is uh, if someone share a file to you and then you deleted the file, uh, the file will be deleted on only on your side. So the original the the original uh, owner still have the file. 
but uh, Microsoft, I'm not quite sure. I'm, I'm guessing they are doing the same thing. Uh, the link will be removed from you, but the original file should still be there. But again, um, I'm, I haven't tried, so I can't verify that. Uh, but nonetheless, for Google, it will do it like that. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, all right, so what I want to show you guys is basically, um, so you do know that you have the basic Word document, Excel, PowerPoint, OneNote, and Microsoft Teams and Outlook. So these are all your basic um, kind of like office files that you normally use. Okay, but if you uh, again log into your Microsoft365.com, click on your uh, face on the top right hand side, click on your view account, what you will see is you will see this section. So this section is where you kind of like manage all your information and what I'm, I want to show you guys is basically this, a subscription. So this subscription is basically um, showing you guys on what else do we have um, as a UM staff and what the UM has subscribed for us. Okay, so pretty much if you look at this uh, under my account just now, um, if I go back again, just to show you guys a little one, once again, Okay, click on, so from your page like this, click on subscription. And you will see this page. Uh, normally, it's the front view. You click on subscription over here, and this is all the Microsoft uh, programs that is freely available for you to use. So say, for example, if you are a user of Power BI, um, you can download uh, Power BI and then log in using your Microsoft credential. And these are all the other files that you or, or programs that you can actually use um, under Microsoft. Okay, uh, I know most of you guys do not use this. So, say for example, if um, you have a kid and um, a son or daughter that likes to play Minecraft, perhaps you you can actually um, use Microsoft uh, your your own Microsoft to showcase a Microsoft Education Edition. So like myself, um, because my son likes to play Minecraft and um, because my field is in chemistry. So in Microsoft Education Edition, uh, Microsoft prepared a chemistry module inside there. So I'm actually teaching my son uh, about chemistry and whatnot in using Microsoft. Okay, um, it's, it's a game, but at the same time, it's an education. So that's one option. So you can have a view, have a look at all these programs. Uh, some of them might be useful for you, especially for the analytics um, options. Um, okay, and and of course this one is um, just for um, trial, so we we won't have it. But nonetheless, these are all that we have. Uh, we also you can also log in using your Microsoft uh, Windows. You can log in to your Microsoft uh, Windows 10 or 11 using your uh, Microsoft credential so that everything will be in your one PC. Okay, so you can also do that. If you are a user of a Yammer, then you can use that. Uh, if you have you have no idea about Microsoft Planner, then you can use that one. It's, it's actually very useful in, in terms of um, showcasing, um, grouping all the tasks that you need to complete. Um, okay, so Free flow, be my guest, um, have a look and, and uh, use it. Okay, so and I think my last point, if there's no more question, is uh, to show you guys that um, for our license, we can use up to five PCs or Macs, five tablets and five smartphones. So basically, Microsoft provides uh, this feature for you to you know, just install it anywhere that you want, uh, whether it's your tablet, your mobile phones, or your PC. If you have a few PCs, then you can always install it in multiple PCs. So in my case, you can see here, um, I'm actually using it in all my PCs. Um, I have it on my this current PC. Uh, this is actually an old MacBook Air, but I'm still using it because uh, my son is using that one. Um, this is my MacBook Pro, uh, my mobile device now that if, if I, would, I need to go anywhere traveling overseas, then this is what I'm going to use. Um, I have another PC over here, and this is another old MacBook Air. And this is uh, my second PC. So I have two PCs over here. 
So one is for my teaching documentation, another one is for my computational work. But nonetheless, I've also linked um, my office PC over there. Okay, so this is just to show you guys that these are all the devices that you can actually um, use, download. And if, uh, like I mentioned just now, if you look at um, your accounts and it is not your UM credential, but you would like to use your UM credential, and uh, perhaps if it's already your UM credential, but you do not have the share feature on the right hand side, like here, available to you. So uh, you might say that your version, your, your Word document, your PowerPoint is, is an old version. Okay. So to download a new version is again where you go to this feature. So 365, again, you click on uh, view account. So you go to my account, click on subscription over here. You will go to your account. And then from the subscription, you can always view. Uh, apps and devices and you can click on install windows so if you click on install windows using this particular link then you will um, straight away um, be able to download the latest file and the latest file should have all this feature at one file okay so you shouldn't have any issues in terms of um, not having a, a share link uh, available to you or perhaps not having presenting teams or recording features and all the features that microsoft have provided to you and that the UM uh, in general have subscribed for you. Okay, so I think this is where we end. Um, can we get a recording of session? Yes, sure. Um, I will make this recording session available. Um, uh, well, it's always available. We can always look at um, our stream, but nonetheless, um, I guess uh, Linda or Umu, we, we can share the link later on um in our teaching whatsapp group okay so if there is any question you can ask me now or otherwise uh, i think we can um, end our session any question no okay so uh i hope yes um, sorry dr hadi uh can you please guide us on how to build quiz on spectrum Okay, um, all right, no problem. We can do that. Quiz on Spectrum. Okay, but so there's no question about this Microsoft. Eh? I think it's, it's rather straightforward. All right, so um, to create a quiz on Spectrum, there are two ways by which you can actually do it. Uh, the first one, okay, uh, let me go back to my original role, turn on editing. Uh, hopefully, my student is not looking at these things. All right, so to create a quiz on uh, Spectrum, there's two ways of doing it. Number one is by which you can create a question bank first and then create the quiz or straight away build a quiz as you go. So there's two ways of doing that. Um, a beauty of uh, doing it in a question bank is that you have it as a bank. So regardless of uh, what courses you are going to teach, if there's a relationship in terms of the quiz and the courses, you can always import uh, your, your questions from your question bank. Okay, to view your question bank, um, you can go it over, uh, let me see. Okay, so um, again, the gear button, uh, once you turn on editing, click on more over here, and then scroll down, you can see here question bank, okay. So from this question bank, um, you can create your questions, create new questions over here, then everything will be here. So this is just an example. Um, question one, question two, question three for this particular course. Um, I don't have it here. Um, I think it's a different course. But nonetheless, okay, so if say you have prepared a question bank like, like this over here, you can always export the questions um, in Moodle format, uh, for this particular course, you can export and then you can import it into a different course. Um, again, the question bank saves based on the course itself. So say, for example, if you um, if you are under curriculum review, where you have two different courses, okay, um, and you, you have uh, an old batch of students and a new batch of students, so say 20 and 20, so of course, they might share the same course, um, the same course file or spectrum, or they might be separated into two different um, courses. 
if they are in the two different courses and you already have your question bank, um, as I've shown previously, click on the clear button more. Um, look at the question bank over here. You can always export. OK, and then you can download the file or normally the file is also saved in your server. So you can go to a new, say, for example, course like this. Go again to your gear, more and then import. OK, so import and then just now if I uh, export it in, into Moodle XML format, then you can always click on Moodle XML format. So for those who do not know, Moodle is um, the platform, the original platform of our Spectrum. So Spectrum is just a rebrand of, of um, a Moodle. Moodle is a, a freeware for a learning management system or LMS. Okay, so that's where that's why we don't have a Spectrum option over here, but we do have a different name. Okay, um, you can click on Moodle, and if if say for example uh, you came from a different university and your old university are using Blackboard. You can export the content from your Blackboard and then import it uh, in our Spectrum. Okay, so you can um, again select Moodle and then um, choose a file. If you have uh, uploaded or yeah exported your files either in your PC or in the server, so you can just find it where you actually save it on your server. Or if you um, save it on your desktop, you can upload your file, choose a file, and then choose the file. Okay, and then once you upload, upload the file, um, import, then what you will have is if you go back to your question bank, you will have your questions like this. Okay, so this is what Dr. Muguna, my partner, is doing for, for his quiz. Okay, so this is a question bank, as you can see here. Um, so that's one way. So uh, before you, why do I talk about question bank first? Is because um, once you have prepared this question bank, then I'm going to show you how do you prepare a quiz. Okay, so this is just to showcase a question bank that you can actually use. Um, so you can have like 30 questions, but your quiz doesn't mean that you, you need to choose all um, types of questions. You can choose uh, part of it if you would like to. All right, so if say I would like to create a quiz, um, go to the page of the course that you, you would like to create a quiz, um, turn on editing and add activity or resource. And this is where we have our quiz. Where is quiz? So quiz is over here. Okay, so you can click on the quiz. Um, just put a quiz one. Okay, so this is where you can give an instruction uh, to your students or normally what I do is I will just let the students uh, quiz is accessible at blah, blah, blah. Okay, so what time, date and whatnot, I, I put it here. So you can put a timing. Okay, so that um, you because you don't want your students to accidentally access the quiz even before the time, right? So you can click on timing and then open the quiz, enable and say set it on tomorrow okay so now what will happen is the student will not be able to access the quiz until the date itself okay additionally if say because it's an online quiz right so you might want to have an open time and a close time you can enable that one as well and um, you can either if the quiz is just for one hour then you can just give it for one hour but uh, what I would highly encourage is for you not to, if the quiz is for one hour, so give them an extra half an hour for every one hour. Okay? Because when you are doing a quiz online, what might happen is loss of internet connection. There might be a problem in terms of server laggy and whatnot. So give your students a little bit of time to actually um, view the quiz. I know you might say, oh, they, they can just find the answers online. But, uh, you know, this is where um, if you're doing it online, then you need to trust your students, tell them, be honest, um, and you, you can talk to them about integrity of education and whatnot. OK, um, additionally, if, say, for example, you uh, would like to tell your students um, a quiz is open for this whole week until Friday, at say um, 11 59 uh, pm okay but you can tell the students but the quiz is only accessible for you for one hour so you can do it at any time as long as it's within one hour 
you can also set a time limit. Okay, so now the students can do any any time that they want uh, with set time limit. Uh, some of you might say, uh, but then one student can do it and then share the results with the other students, right? So it's always possible. I know students will do that. Uh, what you can do is you can also have like a very, very huge question bank and then set it so that the question will be random to the students. Okay, so it will be a bit difficult for them to um, do it. Um, and uh, yeah, pretty much. Okay, so and, and difficult for them to do it, difficult for them to discuss among themselves. Um, and, and of course, if in the worst case scenario, you can always set a restriction so, and, and have different sets of questions for each student. That is to the extreme, but nonetheless, you can actually do that. Okay, so um, and if it's just a tutorial, so you want to do it as a quiz, but um, you know, in a, a tutorial format where students might have a diff uh, multiple attempts. Okay, so this is when, um, oh wait, multiple attempts is down here. Okay, so uh, this is just to showcase what will happen once the time expires. Um, so either open attempts are submitted automatically. So um, I always suggest that this is the best option. Because if it's not submitted automatically, um, then there will be some issues in your end, in our end, okay, uh, where the marks was not will not be auto mark if you are using an auto marking feature, or um, perhaps um, the whatever the students have written will not be safe at all. So if you are asking them to write an essay or a short paragraph, um, and you do not have this option open for you, then you will get pretty much get an empty answer. Okay. Uh, again, it's up to you. Uh, if you want to be like very, very strict and tell your students, I've already given you an extra half an hour for every one hour of the quiz. So make sure that you submit before the one and a half hours uh, time ends. Then perhaps you can do um, a time I submitted before expires or they will not be counted. Okay. So it depends on how you want to teach your students. And, and how you as a teacher would like to control um, the course itself. Okay. And of course, you can also give them a grace period when an open attempt is submitted, but no, no more question answered, meaning that the answer will still be submitted. Okay. The student can still see, but they cannot answer any additional question. Okay. So again, it's up to you. Um, and then grace period, you can change it to this week, hours and seconds. Um, this is all up to you. Okay. Um, in terms of grade, you, you don't have to set this if you don't like to. Um, in my case, I like to just do a minimum because towards the other day, uh, we need to have all the files uh, ready at the end of the semester for our course files. So um, I, I like to have my own files uh, in Excel that I do my codings and whatnot. Okay, but nonetheless, you can use the grading feature if you would like to. Um, layout, in terms of layout, layout is where how the students will view the quiz. Okay, so you can have them um, view all questions as one page or every question per page. So this is very useful if, uh, say, for example, you are asking your students to complete the quiz in class but they need to use their own mobile device, either a phone or a tablet or a laptop or PC or whatever. Okay, so you can have them view questions, um, uh, every question um, per page, meaning that once they click answering question, they will only see one question at a time. So this is very useful because uh, there is an option over here by which you can um, either limit um, shuffle within questions, okay? So meaning that student A will view perhaps question number 10 first. Uh, student number two will view question number two first. So in terms of uh, students discussing um, about the questions live during the quiz, uh, quiz during the quiz session, uh, is very, very difficult, okay? It's very difficult for them to do it. Um, I know it's always, there is always a possibility, but nonetheless, what you are trying to do is you are trying to uh, create difficulty in other sense, not in terms of the question itself is very difficult. No, the question are still, um, it, it, the difficulty of the question is still similar regardless of whether it's in the future or last year. But 
you create a difficulty so that the students will not be able to discuss among themselves. That's number one. Okay. But uh, number two, you also might have heard about chat GPT, uh, by which, you know, students can ask AI, I will give them the answer. Okay. So that is also an option. Uh, but nonetheless, you can't really stop students doing that except for using this safe exam browser. Okay. So safe exam browser is, um, it's like, if you recall last time, um, last two spaces ago, where we actually had, um, uh, lockdown browser. That's what we call it. Lockdown browser. So this is it. So safe exam browse browser is the same as lockdown browser. So students will be locked onto your quiz spectrum only, and they will not be able to um, access a different website. They will not be able to go to chat GPT and ask questions. Okay. But this feature, um, again, is only helpful if the quiz is done in front of you using students on mobile devices. Okay. If say you want to provide a quiz for them to do it at home, even if you lock, you, if you lock one browser, students will always have their mobile phones. They will have perhaps a second laptop. Perhaps they will have their own iPad. Perhaps they have um, their parents in front of them, helping them to find the answers or, or perhaps siblings. Okay. So um, online quiz is good, but if and only if you actually control the environment, okay? If you ask them to, you know, always turn on your camera, for example, um, and perhaps you can do that. But then again, like what you guys are seeing now is you, you do see me and what behind me, but you do not see what is in front of me. So say, for example, if I have all my lecture materials and what I want to say to you guys now uh, in front of me, you will not see it. Okay. Similarly, for students, if you ask them to do a quiz at their own leisure, at their own time, uh, at home, they can always have uh, different uh, materials pasted anywhere around their rooms. Okay. So um, just be mindful about that. Uh, but nonetheless, let's move back to our questions. Um, okay. So questions for every page, you, you can set it. So depending on what you want to know, what you want to do. Anyone want to ask question? Hi. Uh, Victor here. Can you hear me? Yes, bro. Uh, just want to ask you, uh, you, you mentioned that you use uh, Minecraft. Yes, correct. Uh, yes. Do have you have any uh, experience of using it as a teaching tool? Not yet. Yeah, so I haven't tried. Uh, what, with my... what, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think of the uh, applica applicability of it as a teaching tool? Um, I have seen um, even lectures, uh, especially during our MCO, for example, well, during during lockdown. So uh, the students and the lecturers met online in Minecraft and all the teaching because in, in Minecraft, you can actually have a live lecture like this. Um, so some of them actually did that and the um, feedback from the students were actually like, you know, encouraging because again, the video that I've looked at are based on the US environment and in the US, um, the young generations likes to play Minecraft. That's one of the biggest games that they, they actually play. So in that sense, yes, it would be very, very good. But in Malaysia environment, I'm not really sure. Um, I haven't tried it yet. But nonetheless, it's an option that, that if you would like to, then, then you can explore. Um, but in, in my case, in terms of chemistry, then it's very good. Uh, but uh, it's only good for, say, first year chemistry, because as you go higher, you have more complex um, things that you, you would like to uh, teach your students. Um, then you cannot do it in Minecraft. But nonetheless, say, for example, if you have a, a document, a book, for example, you can actually create your own library in Minecraft and ask students to go and view your lecture notes or the, the documents from Minecraft itself. So it's actually um, quite fun, um, but you know, if, if only you like games, but otherwise, um, yeah, for, for those who are teaching literature, for example, English language, um, perhaps you can explore it, um, but for engineering, um, there are some mechanisms in there, like engine mechanism and whatnot. Uh, but nonetheless, as a teacher, if you just want to use it, um, you can only use what is limited to it. But 
if you would like to explore as well, you can create like even in, in uh, for for your own self and if for your own education, you can create pretty much. I uh, would say unlimited things. Yeah. Okay, Prof. So pretty much, um, you, you can try and explore if you would like to, or you can always ask your students to explore it first and give a feedback, and from there you can you know plan ahead whether you want to use it or not. Okay, so moving back to the quiz, uh, these are all the settings. Um, okay, review options is when um, you want to make sure if you don't want students to access their marks, so you just close everything. Okay, all right, because the university policy is to not let them know their marks. They can know their grades, but not their marks. So um, you need to definitely close all of this. Uh, overall feedback, you can if you would like to give a feedback online. But in my case, what I would like to do is I would like to give a feedback uh, in class so that if uh, students would like to clarify about anything, I can always um, you know, talk about it or, or give, give a feedback straight away then then. So this is my normal um, settings. I will just turn off everything. Um, safe exam browser again it's it's up to you um you you can um set it or if you don't want to you know for example you just want to do a quiz uh, as an open book then you just give it as a no so that students can still browse find the answers and whatnot um appearance you don't have to change it if you don't want to um extra section and attempts uh, this is uh, if you would like to set the password uh, say, for example, if you, um, you know, want to make sure that the password is, uh, you, you don't want the students to um, manage to open the quiz before the time, right? So if you want, you can set the password, but it's kind of like a redundant thing. Right? It's not compulsory. Um, okay, this that one is nothing else. The feedback is observable feedback based on marks. Okay, so you can say um, excellent. Um, this one is, uh, say for example, 50 is well done and whatnot. So it, it's up to you. This is just a general ones. Okay, common module settings is just availability, uh, nothing else. And restriction is where you can also set the restriction on the date itself. So student must match the following date, for example, from 25th of January uh, this morning um, until you add another date from and then change it to until tomorrow um, at 12 okay so which means that a student needs to complete or the, the link is accessible to the students just within the time limit that you are putting in here okay uh, text if you are those who are you know using text you can use text um, and competency it's, again if you are using it you can otherwise i'm just going to skip um, oops there is this one I'm just going to delete that one. Right. Okay. So what the student will see now is uh, they will not see this. Okay. So this is not available to them. Um, but uh, so what you need to do is you need to tell them that it is restricted and it's only available during this time period. Now. So what I did just now is just to um, set up the kind of like the cage, the skeleton for the quiz. It's not the quiz itself. So if you click on this over here, this is what the student will see uh, before they actually access the quiz. Okay. So um, remember, this is when I actually put in the description. If I go back here to edit settings. So description over here is when uh, it will be uh, pasted out to the students. So say, for example, you want to say to, you want to tell students this quiz is uh, an open access is is open book quiz. Um, uh, and then you want to put in uh, limitations, um, time and then uh, no discussion. Um, no GPT chat, for example. OK, so you can just put your limitations over here. I can put a bowl and whatnot. Um, save again. <laughs> Sorry, anyone want to ask questions? Oh no. Someone unmuted, so I thought anyone wants to ask questions? No? All right. 
Okay, so this is what the, the instruction will, will paste out here. So before the students actually um, attempt for the quiz, then they will see the um, questions first. Okay, and in your case, now you need to edit your quiz. And um, you have the options over here, a maximum grade for your quiz. So say, for example, if the quiz is 30 questions and one question is one mark, you can change that one. Okay. Um, and this shuffle over here is when, if you have a list of questions, you can click on shuffle so that what the student uh, will see is, so every time the quiz is attempted, the order of the question will be um, shuffled randomly. Okay, so now student A will have a different um, arrangement, B will have a different arrangement, C will have different, and so on and so forth. So it will give them a bit of difficulty, as I said, um, for them, to discuss about the quiz. Okay, all right. So um, that is about settings because most of the settings have been shown previously. So if, it will, if I would like to shuffle, I'll just click on that. And um, this is where you add your questions. So you can click on add. So you can either click the question on the go or if you already have a question bank that I'm uh, showing you just now, you can just click click on question bank. Okay, and then I, will, I want to select this question. Um, and then add a quiz, then the quiz, the question will be here automatically. Okay. Or additionally, if say, for example, you have a um, hundred of quizzes, but you only want to give them, say, 10 quiz or 10 questions from the question bank. So you can always click, uh, click a random. Okay. And um, you can number of random questions. So again, you have a hundred, oh, but I do have a hundred over here. So I need to change course. I think I will change course because just now Dr. Muguda has prepared one. Okay. Um, is this the test? Oh, there you go. Okay. Um, I want to edit quiz. Oh, this is a test that I have did previously. So I'm going to delete that one. I'll create a new one very, very quickly. Um, quiz. Test again, timing and leave it out. Okay, so the test is here, click on it. Um, edit quiz, uh, because, okay, now the library, as, we, have you, as you have seen previously, um, there are about 30 questions, right, in the library. Um, so, but I only want to test 10 questions. So I want to put my maximum grade over here as 10, because I want to put, I want to put in 10 quizzes. Save on that. I'm going to make sure that it's shuffled. And additionally, I want to add in a random quiz for my students. So um, I have a library of 30, but now the students will have randomly generated quizzes. OK, so 10 questions from all the uh, quiz that is uh, prepared. Add random question, then everything will be random. OK, so now the students will also see random questions, not just um, uh, one student, but everyone will have random. So now you, you are increasing the difficulty for students to actually discuss about the questions. Uh, but nonetheless, um, again, if, if it's a take home question, then um, a student can still find the answer online and whatnot. OK. Um, all right. So what would be the last thing that I want to show? OK, so say, for example, you are using a random options like this. I'm going to save. All right, then it should be saved. Um, so what the students will see. Let me see. Change my role to students and attempt random quiz. Then now it becomes uh, totally random questions. OK. All right. So say, for example, uh, students have um, answered the questions. And you might say, oh, it's, it's random. So how can you actually mark the questions, right? Because it's random for everybody. So what you can do is, um, so say, for example, I'm just going to complete this, finish attempt. OK, um, submit all and finish, submit and finish. OK, so oh, there's no um, first answer. Oh, I got it one correct. <laughs> OK, so imagine that this is your student's answers. Um, or get one of 10. Ooh. What you can do now is if you would like to um, uh, mark it, you want to view your student's mark, 
So you can go to a gear button over here. Um, you can see the great boot setup. And from the great boot setup, you should be able to see the quiz. So this is the, the test that I've created just now. The name is just test. So if you click on that, um, you can actually um, show report and it will showcase like the origin, the overall grade uh, between zero to ten. So again, because I I set it to ten, and as you saw just now, it was um, only out of one out of ten, which is correct. So you can see it's there. Okay, but additionally, what you can do is you can view your marks. Um, let me see where was it. Well, because perhaps because um, this is not my students show report. How do I show this? Okay, perhaps not this one. Um, I will show what Dr. Muguna have done because you can see from the student's point of view. Okay, um, that one. Okay, so this is what the student will see. So the graph just now is over here, down here. Okay, just now because I am the one who actually attempted the quiz, not my students, so that's why I don't see this. But say, for example, what you will see is each student will have their own question and um, will have their own marks. Okay, so you don't have to mark it if it's a multiple choice. As you see uh, just now, it was a multiple choice, so there's no options, right? So the, the system will mark it for you. Uh, but say, for example, what if you are doing um, a, a short answer or perhaps uh, students need to un uh, to type in the, the word or the keyword. OK, so uh, that is if you go back to our test, I will just showcase an example. Um, uh, I cannot do it because someone has already attempted. So again, I'm going to delete it and create a new one. OK, so again, uh, as you have, if you saw just now, what happened is if you create a quiz and then you yourself attempted the quiz, you attempted and you, you, you did a submission, um, you cannot edit the quiz anymore. OK, so make sure uh, that's why, you know, preparing a quiz in the question bank is way better than, um, you know, preparing it as you go. Okay. It doesn't mean that you can't do it, you, you still can do it, but um, it's a bit tedious in terms of if you have um, actually um, submitted an attempt. Okay. Now, uh, this is just to showcase, uh, of course, to the end of the day, you need to, uh, to explore on your own because the quiz is based on what you want to ask your students. But nonetheless, these are all the options that is available. Multiple choice, true or false, matching, um, short answer, numerical, essay, if you would like to do an essay. Uh, if you are under mathematics, you can do a mathematics uh, calculated multiple choice, calculated simple, drag and drop options. Um, so say, for example, if you are medical students and you want to students to drag and drop organs, uh, I know it's, it's very basic, but nonetheless, if you would like to do that, uh, we can just drag and drop. Uh, or perhaps if you are engineering uh, and, and you are teaching your students about um, rocket science, for example, different parts of it. Uh, part of um, the engine, whether it's a nozzle, the, the, the fuel um, uh, compressor and whatnot. So you can actually have a picture of um, a rocket and then put in blanks so that students can drag and drop information. OK, um, drag and drop into image. So you can explore this on your own, select missing words or uh, description. It's just a description. It's not a question. It's, it's just a description. OK. So say, for example, let me just show you um, multiple choice is very easy. Short answer. OK, so this is what we look like. Um, I'll just put a question test short answer. OK, so this is the um, question. So that will be the this is the question. OK, uh, default mark is one or if it's short, short answer and you need, you know, the the Answer is a bit long, you want to give it a, a higher mark, then you can. General feedback is up to you. Um, this is just a feedback. If you don't want to give a feedback, then be my guest. You don't have to. Um, ID number, it doesn't matter. Now, case sensitivity is um, depending on you, whether it's important or not important. So what it means is that, so say, for example, is the first answer is lungs, Okay, if it's about biology. 
This is the question. How do you breathe? Okay, so lungs, um, in terms of case sensitive, I mean, everybody knows about case sensitive. You put it as um, lungs um, as your answer, and the student key in the answer as lungs, like that. Okay, because of it, it is not case sensitive, that will also be true. Okay, so regardless of whether the students accidentally type it like that, as long as it's lungs, that is okay. Okay, but um, something that you need to think about um, is to so say, for example, um, the answer is lungs because you breathe using your lungs. So lungs is not one, it's, it's a multiple sub-organs. Okay, but if the student only answer about lung and you want to say, oh, lung is not that proper, so you can give them like a 50% mark. 100% if they answer correctly, um, inaccurate but still correct, you want to give you 50, but everything else is, you know, zero, okay, you can. So the answer will be like this, or, um, so this is just based on keyword. So um, as long as the student use keywords, okay, like that, then uh, as long as the system detects the word lungs, then the student will get marks, okay. So if say the student answer, we breathe uh, using a lung like this, the answer will be zero, okay, without the asterisk. So you need to make sure that if you are, you know, you, you want to do a, a keyword key, keyword base, make sure you always use a asterisk as it is uh, mentioned um, over here, okay. So you must provide at least one possible answer. Answer left will not be used. Asterisk can be used to wildcard matching um, any characters. Um, so if you just write lung star like this, um, so anything without S, then sort of will have 50%. But if you change that one to that, this one to none, so the student can answer as lung, lungs, lungs. So even uh, if they type it like this, lung, something like that, just because lungs is there, okay, so you will be a correct answer, okay, depending on how you write it. But uh, say, for example, you expect student to write uh, or, or something like we breathe again uh, using our lungs, okay, you can see there's a space and that's maybe S, but the keyword that you want is just this, L-U-N-G. So you just replace that to L-U-N-G and star. So if the student answer like this, then this this will be wrong. But if the student answer lungs like that, then this will be correct because the keyword is lung over here. Okay. So this is how you use asterisks. Um, let's get that one. And you can either allow multiple tries if it's a quiz. Uh, I I did this uh, previously. So you tell the students you have three attempts. Um, each attempt will reduce your mark. So say, for example, if the student answer it once, it, it, he or she already got it wrong, you can allow for a second attempt by reducing the mark. Okay, so again, it depends on your style. It depends on how you want to do it. Uh, we can also give uh, a hint, for example, as they try um, and answer your quiz, they didn't got it wrong the first try around, you want to put a hint, um, I don't know, for lungs, um, it's an organ in your body, <laughs> perhaps, okay, and if you change, you save, then you can see the question is over here now, okay, and if, say, you want to see how the student will, will see, um, so, again, if you attempt a quiz, um, you need to delete everything and redo it, okay, um, otherwise, you cannot edit. You, you can still allow the students to uh, do it, but um, they, you, you yourself cannot, can no longer edit the quiz. Okay, so this is how you will see the quiz, and this is how the answer will look like. So again, I'm going to try and put lungs like that, and try and see if I got it right. Okay, yes, see, I got it right. Because the asterisk is after lungs. So as long as the system reads lungs, then you got it right. Okay. So that is the uh, information. That is the correct answer. 
Again, you can either display this or you don't you you don't want to display it. It's up to you. All right. Okay, I think that's all for a uh, quiz. You can uh, view it on your own and see if uh, it is to your liking. Uh, but nonetheless, there are multiple options that you can use. Either you use the built-in Spectrum uh, system, or you can always use uh, Google Form, for example, or Microsoft also. If you saw over here, there's also a form. Uh, and this form is, you know, is similar to Google Form and similar to Spectrum Quiz. You can create your quiz online and to the end of the day, if it's here, um, you can you can always go back to your Spectrum and um, add a, a URL and paste the link to your quiz. Okay, so there's, there's multiple ways by which you can do it. Um, but nonetheless, it's up to you. Um, uh, on what will be the best your your preferred way okay so any other questions okay dr hadi much obliged okay so if there's no more question um i thank you guys thank you all for coming uh, i hope it's beneficial for um some of you um and i think linda oh wait sorry uh not linda um yeah, Linda, can you, or, or Umo, can you share the uh, last thing, which is a feedback link? Because um, I do uh, have that. Right. Uh, it's, it has been shared in the chat area. Let me share it again. Okay. So chat. Oh, there you go. Okay. Yeah. So it would be very helpful if you guys can go to the chat area and... Um, Provide us a feedback on whether it's good or bad or, or something that you want to cover but I did not cover. Uh, please let me know so that we can improve it in our next session. Okay, so that's all from me. Thank you. And we will make this uh, link available for you guys in case you want to revisit. All right, thank you and have a good day, everyone.